Our next guest on the Oakland County Megacast, Sabrina Cronin. She is the principal founder of the Cronin Law Firm, joining us on the Megacast. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me, Ronnie. I really appreciate it. Boy, we just did the headline about the effort in Lansing to try to get some of the laws changed, the liability laws surrounding the businesses and COVID-19 and their responsibility and lawsuits. What What's your two cents on some of those arenas and, and having those laws and those protections for some of the businesses, good or bad? Well, you know, it, it can be good for the business owner. And Michigan is typically a more employer favored state, meaning any kind of employment issue, whether um, it's a wrongful termination or harassment or any of those kinds of issues in the past has always been more favored and the employer has always been more favored. So it's no surprise that this legislation is trying to be, you know, moved forward protecting the employer from liability if perhaps an employee uh, contracts COVID or um, somehow a client coming through the doors does as well. But the, the issue though is a little bit broader scope and that's going back to the science behind COVID and the transmissibility of it. And um, you know we've heard from day one of this uh, pandemic to now the CDC changing its course so many different times, as well as, you know, the thought of how, you know, this can be, you know, transmitted versus now, you know, in the beginning it was, oh, it can stay on the countertops for 20 minutes or longer. Now it's, oh, it's hardly, you know, transmissible that way, but we're all required to wear masks. So I understand that if an employer is not maintaining the, you know, adequate protocols in place, for not only its customers coming in, but the employees themselves, that there could be um, some liability there. But again, to prove it, to prove that that employee was, um, you know, caught COVID while working there may be very difficult because it is easily transmissible, you know, through so many different arenas. And so anyone can file a lawsuit for anything, it's whether or not it will stick, that's the question. So with that being the case, Sabrina Cronin from the Cronin Law Firm, what should companies be doing in order to put themselves in the best position, other than maybe, other than of course following the guidelines that are in place in the state of Michigan and in their local county, what should companies be doing to best prepare themselves for a situation like this so that they are able to say, well, no, we took all the precautions that are in place, we were extremely safe and it was likely not us that was the cause of this. Well, it's, you know, it, as long as they are following all the proper procedures, protocols, you know, laws that are currently in the state of Michigan mandating, you know, that certain things be done like masks, et cetera, um, social distancing. Um, I mean, they could go one step further and have everyone sign releases, um, you know, and releases are upheld. It's just under what conditions those releases are, you know, whether they're forced to be signed or if it's done under duress or other, you know, issues, you know, there's, there's things that can always come up relative to forcing someone to do something. If it's, you know, in exchange for working there, um, you know, it, there's so many different fact patterns that can come up when it comes to releases, but that being said, they are upheld and, um, you know, contracts to work at certain places are upheld. Sometimes certain clauses or provisions are deemed voidable or void by a trier of fact, which usually is a judge or a jury. But if that particular provision isn't you know, still upheld, then the whole other rest of the contract can be. So, you know, if they're, let's just say it's, um, it's a salon and, you know, people are coming in, as long as the salon is maintaining proper procedures across the board, they can't treat one patron differently from another or one employee differently from another. That's where most businesses really, um, you know, have kinks in the armor because 
that's where you find liability when there's disparate treatment like that. But so long as you're upholding all the standards and even going over and above, like temperature reading, signing waivers, making sure, you know, they weren't exposed to anyone with fevers or, you know, COVID-like symptoms, and they sign that they're, you know, going into the, you know, business with all of those necessary precautions in place, then I think the employer or the business is a little bit safe. Yeah, I know when we come here into the studio each and every day, we have to take our temperature and then do the health screening and you sign it, you know, you sign off. And I would guess that's happening at so many businesses and in a way it's, it's there to protect the business, right? Is there to protect the business and also to protect the patron. Um, because a lot of patrons I know don't even want to go somewhere if they see someone not wearing a mask or wearing a mask only on their mouth and not over their nose. Um, you know, I've seen some pretty hostile patrons or, you know, um, customers at different locations when someone is not wearing a mask or not wearing it appropriately. Um, you know, it's interesting. You see the different dynamics among people. It's almost like road rage, but with mask rage, it's, it's really, it's, kind of crazy to me, but um, yeah, people are very sensitive to this issue for sure. We are seeing it all during this pandemic. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering, we've been able to speak to a couple judges as well as defense attorneys. What has this been like for you and members of your team to go through the pandemic? How are you practicing right now? Because I would imagine a lot of the courts are still closed. They are. and you know, 95% of everything is via Zoom or teleconference. There are some depositions being held uh, in person, mediations, um, some, some, you know, family law referees are in person. Some, I know of one judge that had a bench trial. Um, it's, it's very, very few and far between. And since the beginning of the stay home order, which was, you know, early March to now, the courts have really been taking more and more um, matters on a regular basis. It's the backlog isn't there as much. It's still there when it comes to jury trials for criminals or jury trials for civil matters, um, some bench trials where it's just with the judge, you know, so it, it's definitely not quite 100% uh, to say the least, but there has been so many positive um, improvements. And five years ago, we would not have been able to do this because technology just wasn't there. And so it, it has been very helpful. And I think, and I've often said this, it's, it's very similar to when, you know, we first started using email. Well, everyone was, you know, some people were for it, some people were against it, you know, people still wanted the old fashioned US mail. Well, now we see where that has, you know, progressed. And I believe teleconferencing and webinars and Zoom calls and Zoom conferences across the globe will forever change the dynamic and the landscape of how business is done. Sabrina Cronin with us. She is the principal founder of the Cronin Law Firm, joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. So, Christina, going back to COVID-19 and the workplace, uh, obviously that companies are, have requirements for what they need to do in order to operate their business, operate it safely, follow the guidelines that are in place. And a lot of them are bringing employees back, and there's still some maybe reluctance there for some employees to come back to the office, or there are things that are going on that maybe they're not entirely comfortable with. Are there ways that these that employees can address those issues with their company or, or with somebody else if they're running into situations where they believe those guidelines are not being properly followed? What is the right way to go about that for those employees? Well, absolutely. They need to speak with their immediate supervisor. It's like anything else with the employer-employee human resources issues. They have to make their issue known. They have to report it. They have to go to their immediate supervisor. It, it needs to be documented. And the employer has to be allowed opportunity to mitigate or remedy that issue, mitigate the circumstances, remedy the issue. 
And it, in, in order for there to be any kind of liability, usually it has to be pervasive, meaning over time, it can't just be a one-time occurrence of maybe someone not wearing a mask appropriately. But if that employer is continually not following the law, then there could be some liability there. Um, it just depends on how much, you know, damages are relative and, you know, that's how we base whether or not we can pursue a particular action because it's a two pronged approach. There has to be negligence or liability. And then there also has to be damages. And in Michigan, we base those damages on the amount of so-called money or economic damages that are lost. We also have what we have in what we call a non-economic or pain and suffering type damage. Um, so all of that has to be measured in terms of whether to bring a lawsuit or not. It's like a cost benefit analysis. Uh, and I know the landscape is very different for so many employees as well, because children are still home, you know, virtually learning at school. And so parents are home, you know, kids can't just be home alone if they're too young to be home. And a lot of younger students still need that assistance from their parents. So it's very difficult for working parents to be at work 100% of the time. And as a business owner myself, you know, I have the ability and luckily we have the luxury of working from home and the stay home orders still say, if you can work at home, then you should. If you don't have to be at work, you know, to perform your job or your duties, then you really shouldn't be. So you know, we are still remote half the time, um, allowing that leeway and the flexibility for those parents that do have those children at home. So I encourage business owners, if you can maintain business and everything is okay, then you should try to accommodate as much as possible. On the flip side of this, I wonder about the businesses, especially those in like maybe an Uber or a Lyft or a restaurant where these workers maybe are not feeling well, don't want to say anything because they know if they have to go out for 14 days, they're not going to get paid. So let's say uh, if someone, if I'm an employee and I don't disclose that information, could the business hold the employee liable? Um, you know, in terms of what, if the business is sued, yeah. And then they discover later that the employee was sick and didn't disclose. Yes. Hypothetically speaking, yes. The business could then, you know, bring in that employee. Um, but usually in, in those instances, a plaintiff who was, let's just say a patron came in and got sick and um, then sued the restaurant. Sometimes a, a plaintiff's attorney would name the employees that were serving them if they were able to do their research and were able to get the names of those employees. And those employees would then be covered by the restaurant's insurance. But then if, the, if they didn't, and then the employer discovered that, oh, really it was the employee who was not being honest or not disclosing his or her illness, then yes, you know, Presumptively, they could sue the employee, but typically employees don't really have deep pockets and their insurance might not cover. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about the mighty dollar and who has the deepest pockets. So, you know, it, I, I, I presume anything is possible. It just depends on what's really going to be viable. There's so many ins and outs and different angles to this entire mm -hmm. world that we are living oh, yeah. in right now. And you mentioned that you do think Zoom and video conferencing is going to be a part of our future. Have you had any, ex any experiencing with, uh, we're hearing the word now, Zoom bombing. So can that be happening in the courts? We know it's happening in schools and with some churches and things of that nature. Uh, but your industry is so different and you deal with so much sensitive information. Could that, is there been a problem in your area at all? Well, we've had issues where people are in a particular Zoom, you know, um, conference, so to speak, for court, and we might not know who's all there. And then we're already in the middle of a hearing and then whether it's the judge or the referee or the magistrate, 
they're not necessarily asking for that person's um, appearance or their name. And um, yeah, it's been a little disconcerting. And, you know, you hear, you know, people, like you say, bombing or, you know, Zoom bombing or whatever. It's, um, you know, technology is not fail proof. And we've seen that, you know, so, and people are saying, you know, like, look at TikTok. People are saying TikTok is a form of, you know, um, espionage or whatever. So it's, who knows, you know, I'm not very technologically savvy for these days, you know, for this time and age, but I do okay. But, you know, it's, it's a new world. And I definitely believe that this is the new norm and we're, it's only going to get more progressive and we're only going to be doing more and more and more things, you know, through video conferencing while I still appreciate the in-person contact and for certain court hearings like a jury trial or a you know cross-examination of a witness i do believe that there is way more effectiveness in person um and you you know you don't you can't see someone's hand motions as much you don't know if they're relying on their phone for an answer or you know if they're getting cheat sheets from a friend you know like phone a friend you know you just you don't know these things and and, and in and in real court settings they can't use a phone when they're testifying during a deposition you know you can't rely on someone for the answer so it's it's very um it's wrought with so many opportunities for errors and not keeping a clean record and during a lot of these zoom conferences when people talk over one another you can't hear i've had several transcripts or video recordings come back from my zoom trials or hearings and they're wrong or they don't you they don't pick up on the nuances of the words that i know in fact were said so um we have we have some work to do here for sure sabrina cronin with us she is the principal founder of the cronin law firm with us on the oakland county megacast sabrina just another few minutes with you before we'll let you go today is there anything else that you believe is important for our audience to know or any other topics that we sh that would be interesting for us to talk about that we haven't yet discussed today? Well, I think that, you know, people just need to remember that this too shall pass, that this is a new norm, that people have to just, you know, don't let fear be your guide. I know the media is so, you know, they sell their, you know, time, their airspace to, to because of fear or what the, you know, the, the how they instill everything in people. And it, and it, I just want people to remember to keep calm heads, you know, just do the smart thing, do the right thing, be kind to one another. And, uh, and this too shall pass. Just, you know, be mindful that we're all in this together. We are definitely all in this together. We have discovered that, right? Uh, Sabrina, Absolutely. before we let you go, do you want to share with our audience what specialty your law firm focuses on and how people can reach you if uh, they do need a lawyer right now? I really appreciate your asking me that, Ronnie. Thank you so much. Um, I have a very full service law firm and I personally specialize in family law and business. And um, but we do a lot of, of other matters such as litigation, personal injury, obviously the employment issues, and um, we do some estate planning as well. And I personally am very passionate about um, how people get along you know, the, the impacting positive relationships, especially with respect to co-parenting. And I am the um, founder also of a business and we're um, just starting a new workshop series, uh, co-parenting in a minefield. And that's starting September 29th. It's a four week workshop that I am offering on learning how to diffuse explosive behavior. And I think it's very apropos to today's um, issues that we have out there that you know, people just have to be more mindful. And um, it's, it's very important to me that people learn how to get along, especially when young people are in the middle of it. And they're so affected by how people treat one another. So please join me and uh, call my firm and sign up for the, uh, the workshops. So again, that is such a great topic for a workshop because there are so many raw emotions surrounding families like when they're co-parenting and divorce and things of that nature tell us again how can they sign up and is there a cost and is it going to be daytime nighttime virtual give us a few more details 
Yes, there is a cost and it is virtual. It's in the evenings on starting on Tuesday, every Tuesday evening. And if they want to um, sign up for it, they can call me um, at the office 248-258-3500 and ask for Sabrina Cronin or Adrienne Grant. She is my assistant helping me with these workshops. And um, they're, you know, depending on the size, uh, I would like to speak with people individually because I need to assess how coachable they are because it's not really legal related. It's more from a practical standpoint. From all the years of my practicing family law and the craziness that I've seen and just me personally from my own personal perspective and my own personal experiences, I'm really trying to empower everybody. And I really, I have a, a process by which I, you know, determine whether they are ready to join these workshops. But I encourage anyone and everyone to call me because I can save you thousands and thousands of dollars in the courtroom, as well as just unnecessary tension with your, you know, co-parent or ex or the, you know, other parent of your children. And really, I see the negative effects on the children. I see how kids these days are just depressed and despondent and anxious and dealing with so much that they don't need, you know, the tension between their parents to add to their plate. It, it's, it's a very, very negative repercussion that they don't have to suffer. Well, it's great that you've recognized that and that you are reaching out to try to help so many families. We appreciate you taking time to be with us this morning. Sabrina Cronin, she's the principal founder of the Cronin Law Firm. Check out her website, get a little bit more information. If you are a parent, co-parenting, going through a difficult time, try to see if you can get in on your workshops. Thank you for uh, being with us. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.